In this video, we're going to learn about the cosine rule. If you haven't already done so, I'd recommend you watch my video on the sine rule first, since this video is going to build upon some of the ideas from that one. I'll put a link in this video's description. In the video on the sine rule, we started by drawing a triangle, like this, and labelling the sides A, B, and C, and the corresponding opposite angles as capital A, capital B, and capital C. And then throughout that video, we used the sine rule, which looks like this. There's another rule that applies to this triangle as well. It's a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc multiplied by cos of a. And this one here is known as the cosine rule. And we're going to use the cosine rule for this video. So let's have a look at how you can use the cosine rule to help us find missing information in this triangle here. If we're going to use the cosine rule to try and find a missing side, we're going to want to label that side as a. So we're going to label the x here as a. Then of course the angle that's opposite this A must be capital A. The only other bits of information we're given in this question are the other two sides, so they're going to be our lowercase b and c. Now it doesn't actually matter which way round you put these, I'm going to say that the 11 is the b and the 15 is the c. Now that you've labelled the triangle we can take the formula and start to substitute in all of the information from the question. So we're going to start with a squared, and we know that a is x, so that's x squared, and this equals b squared, so that's 11 squared, plus c squared, so that's 15 squared, and then it's minus two lots of b, which is 11, times c, which is 15, and then also multiplied by cos of capital A, so that's the angle, 75 degrees, so multiplied by cos of 75. Now we leave the left hand side alone, that's x squared, but this whole right hand side here can be put into your calculator. For this question, if you type all of that into your calculator accurately, you'll end up with this number here. So if x squared is equal to this number, then x must be the square root of that number. So if we square root both sides, on the left we get x, and on the right we get the square root of that number. You'll definitely need to use your calculator to square root this number, and if you do, you'll end up with this number here. Now since x is the thing we're trying to find in this question, we can now round the final answer. Let's go for one decimal place, that would be 16.1. And some units, these lengths are all in centimetres, so this one would be centimetres too. Let's try a second example of that now, so a different triangle this time, but once again we'd need to use the cosine rule. We can start by labelling the missing side we're trying to find as lowercase a, and the angle that's opposite that one, capital A. The other two sides that are given in the question must be b and c, and as before it doesn't matter which way around we label the b and c. So I'm going to make b the 9, and c the 6. Then we take the formula for the cosine rule, and we substitute in these values. So instead of a squared we have x squared, and then instead of b squared, that's 9 squared, and instead of c squared, that's 6 squared, then it's subtract 2 lots of b, which is 9, and then multiplied by c, which is 6, and multiplied by cos of a, and cos of capital A is cos of 62, so multiplied by cos 62. We then leave this left-hand side as x squared, and type this whole right-hand side into your calculator. If you do that for this question, you'll end up with this number here. Then we just square root both sides, so x will equal the square root of that number, and if you type that into your calculator, you'll get this answer here. Once again, I'm going to round this to one decimal place, so the answer to this one is 8.1 centimetres. Now the cosine rule can also be used to find missing angles in triangles, like this question here. In this question, we've been given all of the sides, but none of the angles. We can use the cosine rule to find any of those angles, and in this question, we've been asked to find the one that's been labelled x. We're going to start by labelling the triangle. We're going to label the x as capital A, since that's the one we're trying to find. The side that's opposite this, so that 4 centimetres, must be the lowercase a, and as with all of the cosine rule questions, the b and c don't really matter which way round they go. So I'm going to put a b by the 7, and a c by the 5. Now when you use the cosine rule to find an angle, we actually need to use a rearrangement of this formula. So I'm going to show you how you can work that out now. So if we take the cosine rule formula, and you see we've got this minus 2bc cos a on the right hand side here. We're going to add 2bc cos a to both sides, and that'll cancel it from the right hand side. So if we add it to the left hand side, we've got an a squared there already, but now we've got plus 2bc cos a, and on the right hand side it will have cancelled, so it's just b squared plus c squared. Now we're going to subtract a squared from both sides. This will mean there's no a squared on the left anymore, so it's just 2bc cos a, and on the right hand side we've got b squared plus c squared, but we've just subtracted a squared, so b squared plus c squared minus a squared. 
Next, what we're going to do is divide both sides by 2BC. That will cancel the 2BC on the left, so it's just cos of A. And on the right-hand side, we have this whole right-hand side, B squared plus C squared minus A squared, and we're now going to divide that by 2BC. This one here is the formula you need to use if you're using the cosine rule to find a missing angle. So let's replace that formula at the top of this question. Now we can continue with the question, but we're going to substitute into this formula instead. So on the left-hand side, we have cos of A, but we don't know what capital A is, that's X. So it's cos of X. This is going to be B squared, so that was 7 squared, plus C squared, so plus 5 squared, subtract A squared, so subtract 4 squared. And then all of this is divided by two lots of B times C. So two lots of B, which is 7, and then multiplied by C, which is 5. We leave the left-hand side alone, so that's cos of X. And this whole right-hand side can be typed into your calculator exactly as it is there. If you did that for this question, you'd end up with this number here. Now, since we have cos of X equals this number, but we just want to find X, we're going to use inverse cos. So on the left-hand side, we would have X. And on the right-hand side, we would do inverse cos of this number. If you did inverse cos of that number, you'll find that X is equal to this number here. Let's round this one off to one decimal place. So that would be 34.0. And this is an angle, so it's degrees. Now let's try one more example where we're finding an angle. So for this triangle here, we're going to find the angle that's marked X. We first of all label that as capital A, and the side that's opposite this, lowercase a. The other two sides are just going to be B and C, so let's make the 15 the B, and the 9 the C. Then we're going to write out this formula, so we've got cos of capital A, so that's cos of X, equals B squared, so that must be 15 squared, plus C squared, so that's plus 9 squared, subtract A squared, so subtract 20 squared. All of this is divided by 2 times B times C, so 2 times 15 times 9. The left hand side is just cos of x, and the right hand side, if you type that whole fraction into your calculator, you should get this number here. Then we're going to use the inverse cos button, so we would have x equals inverse cos of this number, and if you do this on your calculator, you'll find that this is the value of x. I'm going to round that to one decimal place, so this one would round up to 110.4. And of course, it's degrees, since this is an angle. So in this video so far, we've looked at how we can use this version of the cosine rule to find a missing side, and also the rearranged version, this one here, to find a missing angle. And in the previous video, we used the sine rule to find a missing side, but also an alternative version of the sine rule, this one here, to find a missing angle. Now something that students tend to find really difficult is to decide which of the rules they're going to use. Is it the sine rule or the cosine rule? Is it for an angle or for a side? So I'm just going to run through now briefly how you can determine which rule you need to use. So if in a question you're given a triangle, and you're told information about two of the sides, and also the size of the angle that's in between those two sides, so this one here, and it's really important it's the angle that's in between them there, you're able to work out the other missing side using the cosine rule. So for instance, if you were told these two sides were 5 and 9, and the angle that's in between those two sides was 72, you could work out the green side by using this cosine rule. Next, if we take this triangle here, and you were told all three of the sides, and you were asked to find one of the angles, you would always use the cosine rule for this. So for instance, if you were told the sides of this triangle were 6, 11, and 12, you could find that missing angle there by using the cosine rule for angles. These are the two situations where you would need to use the cosine rule. Now when do we need to use the sine rule? Well, if you take a triangle, and you're told information about one of the angles, and the side that's opposite that angle, and you're also told one of the other angles, and you're asked to find the side that's opposite this angle, then you would need to use the sine rule. So for instance, if you were told one of the angles was 72, and the side that's opposite that angle was five, and then you were told another angle, say 83, and you were asked to find the side opposite this one, you would need to use the sine rule. So you can identify we need to use the sine rule when we have two pairs of information there. You can see we've got the red pair and the green pair. Notice how there's no information about the other pair, the side that's blue and the angle that's opposite that. And finally, if you're given a triangle, and you're told information about one of the sides, and also the angle opposite that side, and information about another side, and you're asked to find the angle opposite this one. In this scenario, you would need to use the sine rule again. So for instance, if you were told that this side here was 20, and the angle opposite was 21 degrees, and you were told this side here was 30, 
and you are asked to find the angle opposite this one. So once again you can see we've got two pairs there, we have the red pair and the green pair, and there's no information about the sides or the angles for the remaining pair. So in this case you would use the other version of the sign rule, that's this one here. Thank you for watching this video, I hope you found it useful, check out the one I think you should watch next, subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos, and now try the exam questions I've put in the video's description.